Hey there viewers and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage where today we're talking about probably the best truck you can buy for its money. We just pissed off like everybody so that's perfect. So this is my 1997 C1500. It's not a Silverado, we'll get to that in a few minutes. It is a 1500 series truck. And uh, this is, in my opinion, the best do-it-all work truck you can buy probably from here on out. 1996 to 1998, that short window with the LT1 350 V8 or even the LT1 305 V8, Heck, even the 4.3s, any of the engine options in these are great. I don't see any problems with any of them that are not fixable with a socket set. They're just simple trucks. And that's why I like them. But let me show you all the reasons why I like this truck and why it is the best truck you can buy for the money. This is the 350 LT1 V8. That's 5.7 liters for those of you who don't have a flag on the moon. And if you look at the layout of this engine, there's so much room on both sides. Everything is easily accessible and clearly labeled. And GM was so smart to actually give you a storage and toolbox under here where you can keep a spare belt, spare fluids, and all that good stuff in the truck with no problem. Wasn't that thoughtful of them? Almost like a manufacturer labels their fuse box and gives you space to work. You know, unlike Ford. So if you follow me under the hood, everything in here takes 15 minutes to do or less. Except the transmission, that takes about two hours if it's a two wheel drive. But this truck is so easy to work on. You need an AC compressor? Here it is right on top. You got four bolts and it's off. You need an alternator? It's two bolts right here on top and it's off. There's nothing on this truck that's a terrible job that the DIY watching YouTube like you are couldn't figure out how to do. The 350's a proven engine and legend has it. A long time ago in a GM lab in 1955, they came up with this legendary monster and put it in a car. And from then the push rod 350 has been around forever. And yes, I know the technical history, it wasn't actually 350 at the beginning, but the small block Chevy was born in 55, and here it is still, still rolling strong. Let's get on to some other features I really like about this truck, besides going on and on about this engine, because really this engine by itself needs its own video on why it was so dang good. Now, for those of you who saw our Dodge video, my main problem with the Dodge trucks, as far as using them as trucks, was that the gate didn't work, left-handed. These gates are perfect. I have yet to come across one of these trucks, even the ones that are ridiculously bowed out, crushed by ladders and whatever you throw at them, they always open. Even if you have to use a screwdriver, they always open. So I like these tailgates. They're tall, they're big, the beds are deep. And just like our Dodge video, these also came with six and eight foot beds. But just to spite Dodge, it's actually six and a half feet long to be a little bit bigger because we're better. Now, we're giving a little more credit to this truck than maybe it deserves when we're talking about the interior, but I think that there's a revolutionary thing about what we call suicide doors in the business, where one door opens like a regular pickup truck and the other one goes the other way. Now, because I use this truck for work, I've got all my tools back here and usually an apprentice or an assistant sitting here, but this nice open cabin area is really useful from time to time. And I really appreciate this design. Now Ford did it around the same time, but this big square piece, I'm gonna give this 0.1 to Chevy. The F-150s that do it, 
It's only about that wide. You don't have any space. And the Dodges, well, I guess you can learn how to climb in a Dodge. I think they did it in 99 is when they started Suicide Doors. Some Mopar nut will correct me. But a, uh, still, good design. I'm a fan of it. Now, when talking about interiors, I think this is probably GM's best interior. Like, forget Cadillacs and leather and all the crap that didn't hold up. The dashboards didn't crack. The door panels aren't falling off. The windows still work. I've not had to fix the windows yet in this truck. Now, I know that was a problem at higher miles, but I use my window all the time. I haven't had an issue. The door handles, everybody tells me there's problems with these. I have not experienced it. Maybe I'm just not a straight up barbarian on the door handles, but I haven't had the problem, but these are cheap and readily available. In fact, every single part store where we live has these in stock. So that does tell me that maybe that was a common problem. I just haven't experienced it. The seat. I get in and out of this truck all day, every day, going to job sites, fixing people's cars at their houses, making it happen, going to the parts store, picking up engines, getting in and out. This seat is not ripped. I have not had this reupholstered. Also, this is a 97 truck, not a luxury truck. It's not leather interior, it's not fancy pants. You want lumbar? You got it. You want, you know, power seats? You got it. You want an armrest that's not, you know, uncomfortably low? Ford. Here it is, look at that. It's fantastic. Also, the seat is wide enough to accommodate you even if you're a gargantuan American-sized person. Like, I could probably eat the other three people that worked here and still sit in this seat and fit comfortably. It's that huge. I like the adjustable headrests. The air conditioning is easy to understand. All the controls are straightforward. Another thing this truck gives you, you actually get a voltometer, fuel gauge, which everybody has. But you get your voltometer, your temp, and your oil pressure. And they're all accurate. So at idle, your oil pressure comes down. When you're on the throttle, it goes up. It's giving you live data. It's not just telling you, yes, I have it, no, I don't. I think the Jeep Cherokees and the Dodges, actually, and the Fords are all yes or no with oil pressure. They don't have a, you know, this is where we're at. I like the right now data. That can tell me the health of an engine right off the bat. So let's go on and talk about the next thing. Now the next thing is actually above us. This is the truck with overhead storage. This only came on the top of the line trucks, which this one doesn't have leather, which is what I prefer in the South. I'm not baking my buns every time I get in here. But you get your overhead lights, you get your garage door opener with button attachment, your sunglasses visor, and because it's the 90s of 90s, you get a CD player, CD, uh, CD holster, CD carrier, place where you store your CDs. Cup holders, unlike the other trucks we've reviewed from these same years, you got two cup holders here, you got two more up here, you got two more back here. See, Chevy knew their market was a uh, big fat guys like me who wanted to have their drinks and their fast food because if you're buying this truck, it means you're doing some work and you're gonna be living out of your truck basically for most of the day. So they gave you plenty of space. You need to charge your phone? Well, back in the 90s, you didn't have that. But you still get three, three places to put up phone chargers, tool chargers. So if you've got a drill, a saw, for us, it's our impact. Anything that can be charged off of the 12 volt circuit can be charged right there. And the alternators are strong enough to handle that all the time. I really appreciate that about these trucks. Next thing. More things to love and one thing to not love about these trucks. First, I like these wheels. I just have, they're the stock ones. But 15 inch tires are small, which makes them cheap. If you have the big 16s like the Dodge Rams came with or the 16s and 17 options as the F-Series had, those are gonna cost more. 15s, cheap, everybody could take them. Everywhere has them in stock. They're actually starting to phase out now. But for that long span of time, these were in stock absolutely everywhere, and you can get these all day long for very cheap. In fact, I got this set of four from my local tire dealer for less than $300 for all four, and that's mounted in balance because we don't do tires here at my shop. Things to complain about with this truck, yes, everything has ridicule. The steering, everybody in the comments has already posted this by this point in the video, but the idler arm, the drag link, the tie rods, the pitman arm, absolutely everything in the steering circuits 
is garbage. You just, you'll be replacing them for the rest of your life, so you may as well get good at it. Um, or pay a shop to do them, and do not cheap out on parts. Get Moog, get AC Delco, get a high-end quality tie rod, drag link, idle arm, because it's expensive labor-wise to do these things. Get it done once, get it done right, don't deal with it again, especially if you're dependent on these trucks. That's my advice on that. We'll go to the next problem with these trucks. I've got a complaint for the complaint department regarding these taillights. These taillights, the sockets are always going out, the circuit board they're going in is always going out, and I put like 3,000 bulbs in this truck over owning it about four years. That's a little ridiculous. In fact, this one's out again. I'm getting tired of that. It's not seemingly a solution to it. I think they just get hot and wet and they quit working. I think I'm gonna end up replacing the entire assembly at some point. Maybe going with some upgraded package or solution to this. Somebody's made a solution to this besides Dorman. Cool. That's another complaint I have about these trucks is their taillights don't seem to the blast. So that's frustrations. The three packages in this truck, we'll get right into that. No transition whatsoever. Make this really easy on my editor. You had the WT trucks, which stood for work trucks. You could get that in the 1500. They only came with a long bed, a regular cab, and a 4.3 liter V6 with an automatic transmission. At least that's all I've ever seen in them, ever. I think you could get a manual, but you had to order it. And that's why some of those are out there. But they were standard 4.3 V6, automatic transmission, vinyl bench seat, long bed. That's what you got. And they're great. There are some of them still out here today. They work out fantastic. The next trim level was the Cheyenne trucks. They have the square headlights. We'll put a picture of one of those in here because I don't have one available. The square headlight Cheyenne trucks were the hard working trucks. I think the WTs also had square headlights. The Cheyennes had hard working trucks. You could get the 305, the 350, or the 43 in them. They were kind of the mid tier, so you would get cloth, you couldn't get power seats, I don't think. You could get the extended cab, and um, you could get a cassette deck. I think you could get CD player in 97. I don't think you could in 96. I'm not sure, somebody have to look that up. But it was the mid-tier. And then you have this one, the top of the line, the Silverado package, which later in 99 became its own line of truck. The Silverado package meant you got the top tier of everything. You got the quieter interior, the better fender skirts, you know, quiet ride. Everything was great about them. You got the big center console or the fold down center console bench seat, which was a cool option. This truck just happens to not have it. Um, but those are all great things about the Silverado package. It was the king of the world. It's got the Gucci looking grill on it that became so famous. I've actually got an extra grill for this truck hanging up in my shop because I just like the design of it so much. Um, you got chrome front and rear bumpers instead of painted. And, and what, what's not to like about it? I love these things. Another reason it makes it the best truck you could buy is that these trucks, unlike Toyota, Toyota is fantastic with their trucks. Their Tacomas are awesome, their Tundras are fantastic. Tundra's got a timing belt of this generation. These don't. Tundra's gonna cost about $10,000, even from the 90s, at least around here. We live in Georgia. Those things are untouchable price point wise. These trucks, you can find some of them in decent condition for five, 6,000, maxed out one like this. I've been offered obnoxious money for this truck, and I'm not gonna ruin the market by saying what I've been offered for it, but apparently, in this good a shape with this nice of paint, all the original low miles, these trucks fetch a nice premium. You On the cheap side, you can get the regular cab, base model trucks, cheap all day long, and they're still gonna be just as hard of working. Now, unlike the Ranger video, where I had engines like the four liter single overhead cam that was a piece of crap, the Chevy trucks of this vintage, 88 to 99, there is no complaints with any of the motors. Any engine you get, you're gonna be happy with. Just don't ask you to do what it's not built to do. This 350, I actually towed that Dodge truck we did a review on here to the shop with this truck on a trailer. And this truck did not care. Towed it the whole way here, didn't overheat, didn't even work hard. These things are built to do work. I did have fun harassing Big Al going down the road, Chevy towing it, Dodge. I, I had fun with that. Much taunting was had. Get all the cab space and say you got kids or a work crew if you're starting a landscaping business or if you're starting a drywall business whatever you're doing this truck is going to get you there it's going to be cheap to take care of for that first portion of your career i mean this is the truck i started my business out of i'll never get rid of it and you're going to find that there are chevy guys out there who have 
these nice Chevy trucks, and you try to f convince one of them to buy it, you won't. We won't. That you can't replace this. And those are the things you should invest in. Things that can't be replaced by technology or age. That they're not. You're never going to get this back. So taking care of these generation trucks, I think you're going to see the value of these things skyrocket, just like you have with the 80 square body Chevys, because they're all still around. They're still getting the job done 20, 30. I mean, heck, some of those squares are still doing it 40 years later. Still working. Parts are easy and cheap. They're reliable, so they're hardly ever broken. And that's one thing. If you're starting a business like I did, you do not want to be fixing your own stuff constantly, especially in my industry. Being a mechanic, you don't want to show up to somebody's house to fix their car and you're driving a jalopy. It doesn't look good. You look like amateur hour if a all you're doing is fixing your own stuff all the time you want to have something that you fixed it it stays fixed you don't have to deal with it constantly and that's what you get out of these trucks it's not like a dodge where it's not going to start at the customer's house or a ford where you'll leave a puddle in their driveway when you're done no not going to have that problem now all this crap talking on ford I'll give them a slight bit of credit that danger ranger we did a video on is actually our other work truck that thing's been great after it's their transmission so not all bad we've been on this test drive for about five minutes and I think I've pointed out eight of this generation Chevy trucks and about five of the generation before these well we're getting in a dark area here but these trucks their predecessors and even the generation after them the first generation of the actual Silverado trucks with the five threes they're all still here they're all still reliable they're just they're not gonna die that's why this is the one you should buy need parts since there's so many out there you're gonna get parts need something that's not gonna quit the reason these people keep buying them if they were junk think about it the Pinto sold really well they're not all still here junk so there's definitely a reason they're still here I've experienced it when I bought this truck it had right at a hundred thousand miles on it we're at 145, 603 as we drive. And this thing has given me no trouble. It did go through a starter and an alternator, but those are maintenance items really after 100,000 miles. So that's all we've got for this week's review and I hope you enjoyed it and go get you one of these Chevy trucks and seriously, you'll see how good they are. But uh, since the teasers are doing so well, here's a teaser for next week teaser for next week oh, never mind <laughs> it's literally dead